Thank you, um, and uh, th thank you, uh, Mr. Henry, for your testimony. Uh, in your written testimony, you mentioned that um, you, you mentioned a constituent of mine, Mr. Puckett, um, and uh, and mentioned that basically he had to sell a generation's old business because he just couldn't make the compliance cost. Would you, would you uh, explain that to the members of the subcommittee? Certainly, yep. <clears throat> you know, the, the brick industry uh, news travels pretty fast, and a few weeks ago it, it came out that Columbus Brick had decided to sell to General Shale, a large multinational conglomerate. And, and Al and I spoke about it, and Al said one of the mitigating factors was continually continually increasing costs to comply with new regulations. He said with his age and where his family business was, they couldn't commit the four to six million dollars he felt like it was gonna cost him to comply in the future with not only this rule, but other rules being considered for our industry. And he just felt like his only choice based on that and some other factors was to sell. And, and so when we, when we weigh the pluses and minuses of any of these things, we, we, we need to weigh the, the cost of the loss of jobs um, against the benefit, uh, and I'm sure everyone would, would agree with that also. You're a small business, Mr. Henry. You employ 58 people. You'd like to get back to 95 people, uh, but, but that would require bringing Plant 2 back online and you're just not willing to do that with the, with the compliance cost. Is that correct? Well, that's part of it. I mean, a lot of it's economy driven also. I mean, the, the building sector has been through a, a horrible nine to 10 years. It, it's been no fun. But, you know, certainly one of the considerations in the soft market is, is things that you would have to do possibly to, to bring that in line. And, and, you know, one of the frustrating things I think for us as a company is we currently, and have been since 2005, we've been capturing 95% of our haps. So 95% of our pollutants we capture. This new rule is dealing with three to 4%. And, and so to spend that kind of money on three to 4% more capture rate uh, and not know if the final rule is gonna stay like it is, it, it's kind of scary. And, and so let, let's make sure we understand. There was a rule that went into place in 2003, is that correct? Yes. And, and you got about the business of complying with that rule. Yes. And, uh, and uh, many of your colleagues around the industry did so. In the meantime, there was, a, there was a lawsuit which took till 2007 to get resolved and turns out the court ruled that the EPA was wrong and that the rule could not go into effect. Am I correct so far? That's correct. And, and so um, now, in 2015, EPA comes, now, now that you've got 95% of, of your emissions control, EPA comes up with another regulation that says you've got to do better, and there's a lawsuit about that. Yes. And that's that moving target you're talking about. Exactly. I see. Well, you know, I just hope that, that uh, there's, there's some way we can do, do the balancing act that Mr. Whitehouse talked about. We always have to, um, we oft, always have to balance the cost versus the benefit. And I'm, I'm sorry, uh, my colleague has, uh, um, has missed um, the acknowledgement on both sides of the dais that we need to do that. You know, electricity can kill you. No, no question about it. But we take risks in our society that, uh, you know, without electricity, our economy would would grind to a halt. And uh, and so we we established a correct balance of this terrible force called electricity that can kill you, and the benefit to society. Um, re reducing the speed limit to 30 miles an hour nationwide would save lives. No question about it, but we've taken the position as a society that that would just be too harmful to the economy, and so we're willing to take that risk and get our speed limit up to 70 miles an hour on interstates and, and whatever uh, the states decide to do on state-regulated roads, and that's a balancing act. And, and that's all we're asking EPA to do, and I'm sure that's all the plaintiffs are doing in this lawsuit is give us something that um, will allow 
this 40% extra number of employees that you'd like to put back to work, allow them to have a living. And so I hope we can, uh, we can work on this legislation and, uh, and achieve that sort of sensible balance. Thank you, Madam.